when you stream to YouTube there, it doesn't really go until you click the bottom of your screen on. Yeah, on, I am on already on YouTube, I hope. So somebody can verify with me and I'd let people in now. Um, and the people that are coming in, uh, if you're on YouTube, we'll get started in just a few minutes. You are on YouTube, Matt. Yay. All right, Patty, let's go. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to Capered Core Zoom presentations. My name is Patty Supe. I am this year's Capered president, recognizing the overwhelming need of our teachers for professional development in the area of distance learning for health and physical education. We have reached out to some outstanding educators and presenters to offer a series of free workshops. 
This is the third of our series. Next week, this week we have a full week of technology related to presentations that you will not wanna miss. We are working on several great presentations actually throughout the fall. So keep your eyes open for continued great presentations. Today, we are kicking off this core tech series with our capered tech guru, Matt Bassett. Matthew Bassett is a K-8 physical educator in San Jose Charter Academy in Southern California, and also works as part-time lecturer for CSU Long Beach. Matthew is a nationally board certified teacher active in Capert and Shape America, director for the 2021 K-8 elementary physical education workshop and a national presenter. His specialty in presenting is showcasing how to use technology with your students and provide direct instruction to building your own technology. But before we turn this over to Matt, we have our next Shape America president on the call today with us. And I'm going to let her just say a few words. Thanks, Patty. Oh, I've got Carrie Drain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Forgot my name, name is Carrie Drain. I am a longtime Kayford member and uh, proud to be president-elect for Shape America. Um, thanks for this opportunity to say hi to everybody. I want to welcome to you to this, uh, this webinar and thank you for your commitment to quality physical education and to being the best teacher you can be. As you know, this is a critical time for the profession and we are gonna to have to advocate like never before to make sure physical education remains in the school curriculum, both now and post COVID. If you saw my core presentation last week, you heard me talk about the importance of us advocating from the bottom up and the top down. We need your help advocating from the bottom up by providing quality physical education every day and by being able to explain what the goal of physical education is and why it's important. We advocate from the top down with the help of our professional organizations, CAFERD and Shape America. And this is where we need your help as well. We need to make sure our professional organizations have the resources to provide a powerful voice for physical education in both Sacramento and in Washington, DC. And to do this, we need each and every one of you to be members and each and every one of you to encourage your colleague to be members as well. Just like we belong to the California Teachers Association, we need to belong to CAFERD and Shape America. So these organizations have the resources to provide a loud voice on our behalf. So I encourage you please to join up and get your colleagues to do the same. And uh, thanks Patty and Matt for this opportunity. I wish you all the best for your school year. Over to you, Matt. Thank you, Terry. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, for those of you that are joining us on YouTube, uh, thank you and welcome. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started and kind of get going here while I'm talking through a little bit. Um, no, I don't wanna cancel everything for all. Um, so welcome to the uh, Capered Core series, and we've nicknamed these the Tech Edition because we're going to be doing a lot of tech today. Uh, to get started, um, my name is Matt Bassett. I work in uh, outside of Los Angeles, California uh, at San Jose Charter Academy. I've been there. This is, uh, I just started year 20 last week. Um, I am very active and all around uh, over the place and uh, willing to get uh, to, to fail and to, to continue to grow and strive. Won a couple of awards over the years, uh, very honored and humbled to receive those awards uh, and uh, have been able to get around and to, to visit other state organizations and to keep going. Um, this is my why, uh, if you're going to be honest, it's my family. Uh, these are the, the reasons why I work so hard so that my kids can see me working hard, but also to leave an active lifestyle so that my wife and I can hopefully travel the world upon retirement uh, and to get going. So my goals for today's session are to go ahead and mine seems to be going very slowly, uh, demonstrate two learning management systems today. Uh, we are going to have two amazing presenters sharing about this more this week. Uh, we're also going to be, wow, this is really slow, demonstrating uh, creating some content through different uh, programs and apps and uh, systems uh, so that you can create content for your students. Uh, and then we are also going to demonstrate some digital assessment tools, and you'll get more of a chance to do this later in the week. And then I'm also going to show you a little bit about uh, ways you can create different visuals in class. So as we keep going, um, if this is uh, a joke that you get, this may not be the meeting for you. Uh, but if you are able to be here today, uh, there are a ton of different apps that are out there and different things for you that are technology based. And uh, I'm not going to have really a whole lot of time to get to all of it. 
really today is to cast a wide net for you and to be able to show you a lot of different things and to give you examples. And then the idea is more of an overview. So after today, what the goal is, is to give you some resources that if you're like, you know, I really want to go up to the mist trail. So this is the direction you would go and how you would work. You know, I really want to challenge myself and I want to go up to Half Dome. This is the way you would go. And the last one is, hey, I want to keep it kind of simple. All right, well, there's the valley floor right there on the left side. Uh, so really, I'm going to frustrate a lot of you because I'm going to go over a lot of information today, but I'm also going to be um, giving you resources to take at home. Um, last Friday, I finally got a chance because I was working last Friday. Um, I got to watch Kate Cox and her uh, establishing a positive learning environment in a virtual world. And what I really wanted you to see from this is that she utilized different types of technology pretty successfully in the webinar that she did last week. So she not only used Google Slides, but she used Jamboard, Pear Deck, and GIFs. And so I would really highly recommend that you go watch the session at some point because it will give you an idea. I came away with 13 different lessons for what she shared. And it's really cool because that basically means all of my September planning is pretty much done for my students and what I am going to accomplish. Uh, this week, we're going to have a little bit more in-depth training. Uh, Eric DeVolt is going to spend a whole hour or so with you on uh, tomorrow with Google Classrooms. Bailey Sandsmark is going to be talking about Canvas. These are the two systems that most of you are going to be using to actually provide instruction to your students digitally. On Thursday, we're going to have Mike Schaefer. He's going to be talking about assessment tools. Two of them I'm going to cover tonight uh, a little bit, and he's going to go a lot more in depth with you. And then on Friday, um, Stephanie Sandino is going to be uh, bringing it home with a, an hour plus of Flipgrid activities. And she's already uh, has been able to dive into the new tools that have been released in the last week. And she's going to be able to share those with you if you have not already learned about them. Big thing is, what about questions? So what I'm gonna ask you to do is, if you have a question today, uh, type it into the chat feature. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you can actually type into the chat feature as well. I'm assuming you have to be signed into Google. Um, there might be some people that are able to answer those questions, and I think that would be great. I'm working with an awesome team of people today, and if they feel that they need to get my attention, they are going to stop me at any point to ask questions. If you need to use the chat feature and you don't know how to do that in um, Zoom, go ahead and use the chat button and then you type in there or make comments. Um, I'm not the expert in everything, especially when it comes to technology. There's just so much. So as I share something and somebody asks a question, there could be 10 of you that can answer it 10 different ways. And we want you to do that because there are so many tools that are out there at our disposal to help us provide quality physical education. The big question I always get, what about the resources, Matt? I will take care of you, but please wait to the end. We will make sure that everything that you see on the slideshow, and I'm gonna talk through it, you will have a lot of stuff to be able to do. You will probably have your own, um, your own professional development for the next week just by the stuff that I posted up on there. Today's gonna seem like it's gonna go kind of fast, but I'm gonna be honest with you when I talk tech stuff, it tends to go even faster than you think that you want it to go. And sometimes it even goes into the sci-fi realm where you're doing it and you're not even believing that you're doing it. But sometimes people have made fun of me because I go to the next level, which is ludicrous speed. So if I am going a little fast, please have somebody tell me to slow down a little bit because I definitely get to that. Um, before we get started, I found this uh, came out last week um, on something that I found on Twitter. If you are not on Twitter, please get on Twitter. Uh, this is a teacher tutorial for Google um, Apps for Education. And um, this is a clickable link. Uh, so it's actually will take you to the online thing, online file. Uh, and each one of these kind of helps you do a different activity. Uh, up here, you'll see where it says the parent student version of this. So if it would help them, uh, I don't know who made this, but it is completely awesome. In fact, there's the credits up here. Uh, I thought that they would be good for you to see this because if you are at Google for uh, apps for education school, you're going to go ahead and get that set up. All right, for the first goal, I'm going to talk about learning management systems really quickly. And I'm going to be toggling back and forth between a bunch of stuff. So I apologize. 
uh, if it gets a little slow. So Google Classroom is the first one. So you'll see that this is my Google Classroom and I'm gonna come in and I created a test one for you. So I have to move some stuff around so I can see a little bit better. So just give me a second. Um, up here, you'll see that there is a stream. So if you think of Google Classroom, you can post things in here just like you would for Facebook. And you can post it automatically and you can schedule things um, and you can add in different types of links or files that are on here. And you can even come in here and I don't have any students in this class, but you can assign it just to specific to students if you want. And when you're done, you hit the post button. Uh, for those of you that um, that gets a little tedious, so you can come into the classwork tab that's up here and you're going to hit the create button and hang on, I got it's in the wrong spot. Um, you can actually organize a little bit better. Oh, there we go. Create topic. And then you can go, um, like maybe you have a fitness topic that you wanted to add and however you wanted to organize it. So there's a new activity. So now if I came in and I added an assignment in here, um, I could do fitness gram activities. And let's say I added something and I could hit create. You can put points totals down. You can use this as a way to do your um, your um, grading if you needed to, depending on if you didn't have an online thing. So here's a, a document that I would start to type on as an assignment. And you can also upload one that you've already done from the past. Uh, so what's cool about that is that when you get ready, and then the other thing that you wanna show here is students can view the file. Um, you probably wanna make a copy for each student so that they don't work on the master. And then you have a way to work with them. Um, and then I am trying to find the next button that says, oh, there it is, uh, to assign the assignment. And that'll stay into that spot. So this is going a little slow. I'm using a lot of tech right now. But you'll see that the fitness gram is in here. And you can see that I can drag that down into the fitness category. So it's a way to organize a lot better. When you get ready to go, you have the people tab. There's nobody in here right now because I don't have anybody in class. You can add a co-teacher for you. You can also add your students in. And to be honest, you want to add all your students, make them do all the work, don't do the work for them, uh, which is pretty easy. You can type in names. But what I usually do is, here's the class code on the front page. You can make it bigger. Uh, they basically would go into Google Classroom and they would type the code in and then they would populate that class. So what's nice is they do all the work for you. Uh, you do have a grades tab if you use it. I don't use this. I use a program online. I just found out that it is connected to my online grading program, uh, but I am going to have to learn that because I haven't gotten to that spot yet. So this is Google Classroom. Um, in Google Classroom also, um, there is a link here to a article that I found a couple weeks ago, 20 time-saving Google Classroom hacks. So when you get a chance to see this slideshow, this will be a great um, activity for you. Another thing is that people are starting to figure out how to create virtual space that looks like their actual physical space. So I found that you could do a Google Classroom custom banner. Uh, when I did a search, it said it was 600 by 200, but I found out that's not right. Uh, so I had to change it to 800 by 200. So if you're in Google Slides, you go File, Page Setup, you're going to go down to Custom. And then you change this over to pixels because that's the way it does it and then change the numbers. And I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna mess up all of my work that I've done on everything else. But then you save it as a JPEG, um, which is pretty easy to do and you can create your own activities. The big thing I found out is that this is a picture of my basketball court outside of my school. Um, you have to edit or uh, crop the picture a little bit because it just squishes everything into that file size. So uh, that is something to just kind of give you a little bit more. Um, another idea that is out there, and I couldn't find a good quality one as an example, but you can make a GIF banner. So a GIF is a uh, series of pictures, we'll talk about it later, that loop together, it makes it look like it's a video. So you could actually have yourself walking through the screen and then it stays up there. And because it's considered a picture file, it will load onto Google. Um, the next one is going to be Canvas. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't use Canvas, and I have never used Canvas. There is a tutorial video here for you to explore a little bit later. Bailey Sandsmark is going to do, I, I talked to her this afternoon. She is ready for a very good tutorial and getting to the basics, showing you everything. But you can see that there are some similarities here to Google Classroom, and there's banners, and there's ways to put your assignments in, there's ways to have notes, and there's your grading, and then you have all of these things to, to line up. 
Um, she is going to take really good care of you on Wednesday. So I have probably just really frustrated her for my lack of skill and understanding of what Canvas is, especially when she's the one that made these slides for me. Uh, but I will show up again on Wednesday and she will definitely get you on the right track, especially for those of you that are using Canvas for the first time. Then, so just remember to, to be patient with technology. There are always things that are going to go wrong with you. And, you know, just because it doesn't work now, it always has an issue of um, working itself out and get more help and ask questions. All right, so I'm going to switch up gears now and we're going to go into creating content and creating content. First thing I'm going to do is to go to iMovie and I forgot to start my iMovie already. Um, so I am going to hang on. I'm trying to get my, uh, there we go. Um, I have a whole series of tutorials that I have set up for iMovie already for you um, and to get it set up. My iMovie, what I've done is I've moved my um, library into a backup hard drive. So right now it's not wanting to connect quite well. So I'm just going to kind of talk you through some basics and the tutorial videos that I created for a capered session many years ago are all pretty accurate. So you're gonna have a workspace that's down here and you're gonna import your media. So let me pull in a picture really quickly. Let's see if I can get it to work. Oh, it's gonna be difficult for me, of course. Um, in your workspaces here, you can edit and cut and uh, add in audio files that are in here and drag them underneath. You can put titles, whether they're on just by themselves or on top of a video or a picture. Uh, there are background things that you can pull in, like, uh, so, ooh, it's really being difficult. Uh, and you can add transitions between clips. Uh, when you're done, you're going to come up and you're going to export it out, and you're going to probably want to save it as a file. Uh, I think that for those of us that are creating content, we may need to do some asynchronous things. So getting to learn iMovie or a video editing program would be really, really beneficial for you. And the first time you make a video, it's going to take you a long time, but it will get better. For those of you that don't have a, a um, actually, let me go down. Yeah. This is a link to a series of tutorial videos that I've created and they're on uh, YouTube already. So you'll be able to, to access them at any point. If you are not on a Mac, um, you can use something called Wii Video. So when you have Wii Video set up, um, it's very, very similar to iMovie in that you have a workspace and you'll see that there are video layers. You can do audio voiceovers. You can take some stuff and drag it in. Um, you can trim it down to be a shorter time and get yourself set up. And eventually you can publish. Now, what's really difficult about Wii Video is that we, um, unfortunately, um, is that you have to pay for a, a little bit of it. I think you get it free up to so much, uh, and then you have to have a subscription for it. So if you don't have a video processing program on your laptop or desktop already, WeVideo may be a good example because you just need an internet connection, and then you can do that. So. Uh, for those of you that are going to use Zoom, you can also record content in Zoom and then export it out and then edit it out or just send it to YouTube if you wanted to. Um, Dr. Melissa Bittner, um, I worked with her a couple of weeks ago uh, on a project with Cal State Long Beach. She created these tutorial uh, links. And so when you get the link to this, if you click on this, you'll see down here I have a drive where this file will come up so that you can get an ins and outs. What's hard about it is that while we're in a Zoom, I can't really show you how to use a Zoom because you won't see quite the same things that I see even if I am online right now. So uh, that is uh, something that you can use pretty easily to create your own content and probably how most of us, it'll be really simple to kind of set it up because you just have to cut it in and to start recording. Now, QuickTime, um, this is a really easy pro program for Macs. And so when you come over here, I'm gonna actually show you some screenshots of everything. So when you click on the QuickTime icon down at the bottom, you come over and this will show up. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to File and you have three choices. So the first choice that you're gonna get is the movie recording, which does kind of pops up like Zoom and you can record straight from your laptop. Uh, the big thing I want you to see right here is there's a little carrot right here on your, um, your, your QuickTime. This allows you to make sure to connect not only your camera, but your audio as well 
to it. And I've had issues where I've done this really awesome five minute presentation only to find out I didn't have audio turned on. So if you use that little carrot, you know that it's connected, it'll save you some time in the long run. Uh, you can also do an audio recording. So if you just wanted to do an audio um, comment or section for your students, this would be, and once again, the little carrot, make sure that you're set up with your ma uh, microphone on your computer. And then the last one is a screen recording. So if I wanted to produce something, say that I had created this really great PowerPoint or Google Slides, the QuickTime player will allow me to record me talking over the slides. So I can kind of deliver my, my message with a lot of things. And anytime that you use Google Slides, make sure that you're probably putting a lot more uh, visuals up than text. Because you know that when you're at a staff meeting and all of your teachers, uh, all your principals putting up the slide with 400 words on it and then proceeds to read the slide, um, that really is not really fun for that. So um, another way for hey, the... Matt. Uh, before you move on, sorry about that. We have a question here. Um, someone wants to know if you know, uh, can iMovie be imported into Google Classroom? Uh, iMovie is going to be exported as a movie file, and then you can definitely put that into Google Classroom. And I'm pretty sure Canvas too. Uh, if that's not working, load it up to your Google Drive, and then you'll get, make sure that you share it the correct way because there's the correct way where people can see it and then the incorrect way, which everybody will ask you for permission. Uh, and you can share it that way as well. And you can also load it onto uh, YouTube and just provide the link for people as well. So the big thing with YouTube is they get a little picky with um, copyright information. So if you're playing music and such, they can cause some issues for you and they will flag your stuff. Is that good? Yep, thank you. No problem. And like I said, if you have a question, go ahead and ask in the chat. I can't really see it right now. That's why they're going to stop me. Um, but if uh, other people can answer it as well, probably would work. So Screencastify is another way. This is a Google Chrome uh, add-on. And you can just add this on pretty easily. And you can do the same thing that QuickTime would do. And that you're going to basically have some kind of slideshow going. And you're going to talk over it. Uh, there is a free version. It only allows you five minutes per video. So that's not a whole lot. Uh, if you wanted to, though, it's only $30 a year, so I don't feel that that's a horrible price. Uh, but this is the time when, if you're talking about high quality physical education, try to see if your school can get you something and to set you up that way. So a uh, different way if you don't have a PC, or uh, sorry, if you don't have a Mac, Screencastify will work on Macs or PCs. And then this is a tutorial video that I found on how to do it so that you have an, a chance to, to look at that later. Um, another thing that you can do on, on a Mac or on an iPad or an iPhone is that there are screen recording tools that are on there. Um, I don't remember exactly how to get into the settings and how to set it up, but when you have the screen where in the iPad you, do, you kind of push down on the top and drag it, the little uh, tools show up and then you hit that one that looks like a bullseye, that's the screen recording. So you could be using your iPad to do this and to record. And you might need to edit it out a little bit, but that would be a, a different way that you can create content for your students. Um, I don't have an Android myself, but there may be something for Android. Maybe one of you can share that um, in the chat feature if you know of something for those people that are there. And here is a video for you that you can watch later of how to screen record on an, a uh, thing, on a uh, iPad. All right, so explain everything. This is something that um, I've used uh, different versions of this, and I like this one because you can actually embed video into it. And I'm just going to actually show you some screenshots from my, uh, my explain everything. Uh, you might see it under as explain edu now as well. Uh, so when you go and you open it, you have options and I usually, you know, start with a new one and then you can do a blank canvas, a template, or I think that says files. Sorry, I'm getting old, need to go. So here's what you can do. You have a pencil and drawing tool. You have a highlighter tool. You have an eraser tool. You have a fill tool. You have shapes. You have text and you have a laser pointer and you can see the laser pointer when I push down. That's what the laser pointer looks like. So while you're recording on this um, app, uh, the laser pointer might be how you bring attention to something on your screen. Um, you can add in different features, including uh, getting your videos on there or bringing up a YouTube video as well. So that's really cool that we can have something embedded inside of it. Um, you do have your settings up here in the upper right hand corner. 
Uh, you can add different pages so that if you're trying to think about like how you would build a Google slide, uh, you have different pages that go um, in different slides so that you're not all doing it on one slide. That's where you would do it. And the record button's in the middle and you can record audio or video, um, which is nice. Um, if you needed to get rid of something, you hit the X button on the left side there and then you see the red X button pops up as well. Um, when you're getting ready to export it, um, you go up to the export button and then it asks you how you want to export it. And normally I try to do this when I've used it as a video um, exports. Another big thing that people have really jumped on the bandwagon, and if you would want to get into a, um, a uh, there's a Facebook group, uh, Virtual Classrooms, Bitmoji Virtual, I'm blanking on the actual name, but the, the classroom, it, they have a ton of people in there. So this is actually a very interesting Google or a way you can use Google Slides. So when you come over to mine, you'll see that when I go over the Bitmojis, you see that it has changed to the pointer. And if I was to click on it, it would link to something that I wanted to do uh, for class. So uh, I did this one because it's yoga to a Cosmic Kids yoga routine that's on there. Um, on there. And then the other one might go to something else. And it, this is really cool because it's really how long you want to spend on it. And it's completely like time consuming and addictive. It's so much fun to make these. Uh, what I did find was it was helpful is when you publish this, you can download it as a PDF and just send that file to the students and PDFs are clickable. But I found that it was easiest when I would publish this to the web. So if you're really kind of lost with that, let me know and I'll be glad to help you on the side. Uh, but you could actually set one of these up each week that you're doing something or each class period and then the students would kind of self pace themselves and or they could choose what they were going to do for the different things. So that's a Google uh, virtual Google classroom or sorry, I'm using the wrong word, a virtual classroom for uh, class. And um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, EPW had our first ever virtual summit, which was amazing. And we have a lot of great stuff up there. But Lynn Hefley, she created this amazing tutorial talking about how to create your own virtual classroom. And she actually went a little above and beyond in that she was talking about some new tools that you can use for uh, the newer phones. My phone's a little too old, so I can't do some of the cool stuff she does. But she walks you through how to start and how to get it done. So I would definitely check that out. And this picture, if you click on it, will take you to the, the video of where it is located. Um, I'm kind of weird in that you'll see back up here, I, when you get these Bitmojis, this one, I didn't remove the background, but the rest of them I did. I like things to look kind of clean. So uh, one of the, the things that I found just recently was a website called remove.bg. And this actually will remove the background for you um, on your pictures, and then you can download it. The, the pictures that have no background are called PNG files. So they actually will create it for you. So any vi uh, picture that you have, that will do it and to set you up. Uh, this week, I also found one that's for videos. The bad part is I hear it's only good for about five seconds and then it gets really pricey if you wanna buy it. But this might be a way to kind of remove green screen stuff from you um, if you wanted to kind of jump into that. So that allows you to have a moving picture basically uh, in front of a green screen or a, a picture that you wanted. Um, I'd also recommend if you do wanna jump into green screen, Doink has some really cool stuff that you can do and it's pretty easy. And this is only used on an iPad uh, to create high quality looking. So this is like, I want to put myself in the middle of a Mario video game. Uh, and then you're, you do whatever you wanna do with your kids and then your kids are really amazed that you're really awesome. And once you get the hang of it, it's really simple. If you'd like to use iMovie for it, here's a tutorial that how to do that. Um, there's just a couple of little tools that iMovie does and uses that makes it pretty easy. So we're getting to the part where we're done with the kind of the things that you can do for providing content for your students into developing your own. So we're gonna shift gears in just a second and we're gonna go to assessment tools. Now, when we talk about assessment tools, this, this picture just shows a, a fraction of what is out there. So there are a lot of things out there. And if you have other ones that you use, I would love both on YouTube and on the Zoom, please share some of your favorite ones, but I'm gonna go through with you a couple of the ones that I've seen. So what I wanna get started with is some Google Forms. So I think the first thing that I wanna do is for an assessment, this is a really cool thing. 
I want you to show you what types of questions you can ask. So this is a short answer question. You can get about a sentence out of it. So if you're not really sure if people are gonna be really long-winded about something, always put it as a paragraph. So my short answer questions are usually first name, last name, uh, email address, those all fit pretty easily, but anything else I tend to go to paragraph. Now a multiple choice, you'll see that you have options and you can have as many options as you want, but you see you can only have one choice per option. A checkbox is a little bit different in that you can actually have multiple choices to check on there. A drop down looks very much like a um, multiple choice, but it just looks a little bit different and it kind of hides the answers. If you'd want your students to upload a file, a picture, a drawing, a written assignment, a video analysis, you can actually have them upload a video file. Uh, that's what I have here. You can actually tell it what kind of file you want as well. So you can have it be anything and you can say, no, I just want a PDF or no, I just want a, a video file. So this is really cool. The big thing is that you have to change your settings to make sure that you um, have enough file space. If you have a, if you're a GAF school and you have unlimited drive space, I usually just max everything out and I don't care. If you don't have, or if you're not a GAF school, I would highly recommend maybe thinking about using a different tool than this one because it'll take out your space pretty quick. A linear scale, this is like a Likert scale and you can set it up. You can actually make your own uh, definitions on either side so that you can do it. A multiple choice grid, uh, this is one that you come over here and you'll notice that uh, it only allows you one answer per row. So you have this and you're going to go, I, sorry, Dodger fans, I just can't really vote for you to be good, even though you're better than my Dodger, my angels right now. Uh, and then I, I just really want to mark down a couple of these just because they're just having a bad year. And, you know, that's just because the angels are bad. Um, and then a, the difference between that and a checkbox grid, checkbox grid, you can actually check different things that are on there. Um, on each row. So whatever you kind of feel like you need to do. The date question and the time question, I don't normally use these. You do get a timestamp when you get everything in, but say that you wanted what date did you complete it, you might want them to do date because the timestamp has date and time both at the same time. I once tried to use this as a way to track running times and it doesn't quite work. It converts it over to something else. So this is a Google form. So what I'm gonna do here really quickly I want you to go ahead and in your, um, on your computer's device, I would like you to go look at two, one of two different Google Forms. And this will give you an idea of some ideas that you can do with it. So go to tinyurl.com backslash Bassett. Now remember my name has two S's and two T's and then lacrosse. And on the lacrosse one, you'll see that I have some GIFs and some visuals on there so that you can kind of see how I'm starting to use it. When I'm doing assessments, I've started to use more visuals for my assessment to help my students, those ELL, those visual learners. The second one is tinyurl.com slash Bassett tripod. And I'm sorry, there's three T's in a row in that one. Uh, this one also has some visuals, but if you fill it out and you are one of the first 100 people to fill it out today, the email will be sent to you um, as, with the results. So one of the add-ons that you can get allows you to set it up so you can send out results or email people back, but it is limited to 100 people. Unfortunately, we found that out just a few weeks ago at EPW with trying to send out certificates this way. So if you are on there and able to get to one of those, you'll see what it looks like on the back end when you actually save, uh, when you submit it and then you go into your email, you'll actually see what it looks like. So these are just two things that I've been using for assessments and I'm using more Google Forms. It's uh, pretty easy to build, and I'm going to give you a link in just a minute of what they look like, uh, how to build them uh, within depth. So those are two that you have at your disposal, just to kind of give you a little teaser of what you can do. Um, if you wanted to be able to go look at a ton of examples, um, go ahead and go to tinyurl.com slash Bassett GF examples, and you'll see a list that I started for a, a presentation a long time ago, and I don't, I just kind of kept adding to it. So. Uh, it'll give you ideas for not only content, but also different activities that I'd use it for. Uh, last year, I created a, a Google Form tutorial. It's two pages. And uh, if you click on this form, it'll take you to this link right here that will give you access to the PDF for it. Uh, and these QR codes, and there's tiny URLs that are in there, will take you to the various locations for the tutorials. Uh, if you did do the... Um, 
the tripod quiz. Um, I think I used Autocrat with that one. Uh, Autocrat allows you to create certificates and Formule allows you to email and they both kind of can do the both of the same thing. So uh, you can go ahead and set that up um, and to watch one of those two videos when you're done if you wanted to dive a little bit more into depth about how to get one of these add-ons to do something with a self-graded quiz. And I do have a tutorial on how to make a self-graded quiz back on that one. All right, so the next one I want you to do is uh, we are going to go to, hang on, let me exit out of these. Oh, that's my lacrosse one. Here's my tripod one. Um, I would like you, here's the Google form examples. So you see, I have quite a few of them on here um, for what I do with my students. I'd like you to go to nearpod.com right now. And when you get to nearpod, you're going to look to uh, join a code. So let me see if I can find... I'm already logged in, so it might take me to a little bit of a different screen, but I'm gonna give you a code in just a minute that you're gonna be looking for. Um, and I am going to have you type in P G Z H E. And I'm gonna have you actually participate in a tiny Nearpod lesson with me today. Now, the content of this is stuff like it's, it, you replace the content with what you're teaching, but the idea is to give you some ideas of how Nearpod could be helpful. For those of you that are interested in Nearpod, Mike Schaefer is going to be using Nearpod as one of the three things that he's gonna cover on Thursday. So make sure you catch his presentation. So um, I'm hoping that one of, somebody posted PGZHE into the chat feature, cause I'm gonna launch the new presentation uh, and I'm going to do a live version of this. You can also do this as a um, at the student's pace so that they can do it at whatever time. And it's going to very, very slowly kind of go through here. Oh, and look, I have a new code now. That is really funny. Isn't that always the way? So go ahead and try if it didn't work. E, J, Z, and B. I think I know why I screwed that up. I think I had another window open for that and I clicked on the wrong one. So I'm just going to give another like 30 seconds to kind of let people get caught up on my gaffe uh, and mistake, and then we're going to get going. E, J, Z, N, B. E, J, Z, N, B. And I'm not put it sure. In the chat, Matt. Do what? I put it in the chat. Perfect. And I don't know if it's case sensitive or not. I've not used Nearpod. I'm going to be using Nearpod a lot more this year, but I figured it would it's be good. not. It's not. Oh, it's not. Awesome. Perfect. All right, so welcome to Caper Tech Core. So we're gonna complete the following lesson to help you familiarize with just a couple of the features that are on here. So if you're on your device, it'll follow along as I go forward, it should go with you. So those that are on YouTube, you're a little confused because I'm talking at a little bit different. So what I'd like you to do is to, to uh, draw your favorite activity or sport uh, for a thing. So this is a drawing feature that is in the thing. So I'm going to let you go. And I'm really going to only give you like 30 seconds to be able to handle this. And you're going to watch along as I'm kind of doing this and you're seeing the teacher view uh, as you're going so you can kind of see things. And these are all things that I can access not only now but later uh, to get set up. So and you can see that some people are starting to get in and getting going. So I'm going to give about another 10 seconds because I don't want to spend a lot of time um, waiting. I want to kind of give you more tools to be successful this year. So, and then when you're ready, you just kind of switch over and we're going to go to the next button. And then uh, it gives me some um, activities here. So we're going to go ahead and to do a matching component. Um, oops, I think I screwed up here. Ah, there we go. So, you ready? I'm assuming that you're going because I can't see a button to hit start. Ah, there we go. So I see some of you are starting to get going on the pair activity. And to be fair, I can hide student names so that nobody can see. So and this is just a, a simple little pairing activity to kind of to see if you can get the idea. If you get them wrong, you get them wrong. It's not a big deal. Okay, just give it a couple more seconds and see if you can do okay. 
And I'm going to move on to the next one. All right. So here is a uh, just a quick thing of how do you feel that we're going so far? So this is maybe a self check, uh, a formative assessment for me to see how I'm going. Um, and then you can go ahead and answer. Matt, how would you get the students to, would you tell them, okay, now stop and look at my screen or would you have them open two tabs or? So more than likely you would have them on either the same device or they could be going at the same time or you're on Zoom and you're talking to them like I'm to everybody here. Um, but you could also do this asynchronously so that the students are actually doing this on their own time and it's not dependent on me saying, go forward, go forward, go forward. So you have two different ways to use it. Does that help? Yeah, but I think like when you're going to show us the results, they're still looking at their, you know, like we're still looking at our individual kids screen. Would you say, okay, hit escape and look at my screen? You know, like how do we get them to, I guess they'll understand open two tabs at once. Yeah. Okay, hey, Matt, can I jump in on that real quick? Yeah. So you can do a split screen. So if you take it, if you press escape and get it out of full screen, you can shrink the zoom down to half your screen. If you put it towards the, the edge of the window, it gets the little double arrow and you can shrink it down to half the screen. So you can actually have the zoom window on one side. So you're seeing what the teacher wants you to see. You can have your near pod part on the other half of the screen. So you can actually see both at once and you can work alongside with whatever the teacher wants you to do. Oh, thank Thanks, you. Jess. You're uh, welcome. And, um, on your iPad, it may look a little bit different for those that are using iPads. So they'll, you'll have to come up with a, an idea for that. So um, now I think that's the last one that I had. Do you want to leave the session? Yes. And what's interesting in this, um, you can get some reports that are on here for what's happened. And you can look at engagement levels through this. So. Uh, here is the report really quickly. Um, I had one earlier today. So I had 70 people answer one question. Um, I seem to have done something wrong because everybody had a wrong answer for that one. Um, but you can see how it goes through down and what you're doing and what people are actually finishing and what they're not finishing. And you can do it by the different types of questions that you had on there and when. What's really cool about Nearpod is that you can take Google Slides and insert those and then create the Nearpod activities around those slides that you've already created. And then the other thing that I wanted you to see here um, that's interesting that I don't know what to do yet is there's a sub plan button here. And this might be something that, especially for us that are using it uh, at school, uh, you know we're all gonna have those days that we're not gonna be able to get into work for whatever reason. Uh, God forbid it's because we're sick. Uh, maybe that's how you can get the sub, uh, the plans, so. Um, Matt, can you download those Nearpod results, the report you showed, so that yeah. people can look at those at another time? Yeah, and they should stay up there on your website or in the Nearpod thing for a while, so. Um, Thank you. Um, how to teach remotely with Nearpod. Here's a nice little video that you can watch later if this interests you for Nearpod. Also, Nearpod is doing a Camp Engage this week. I was actually, before I got on this morning, um, I was actually on there. Uh, if you click this icon, uh, it'll take you to how to register for it. So uh, they have a lot of stuff that's going on. It's like four or five hours a day, one session per hour uh, for a while. All right, so the next one I want you to do is to go over and go to kahoot.com. Yeah. Yep. Real quick, on Nearpod, our school was talking about um, PE teachers taking attendance that way because kids can just check in on Zoom and then just disappear or act like they're paying attention, but this way it's interactive. When you get the report, is there a way to make it like alphabetical so we could take um, attendance quicker I think later? It does, but it depends on how they enter their name. So I had students when I was using it, I used it with my kindergartners very little last year. Um, the students would type in and sometimes I had one that the student didn't put a name down and I had some that they were using their nickname. So you're going to need to instruct them when to sign in, sign in using this name to make it easier for me. Um, and then the other thing you can do is to create a drawing one where it's like, can you sign your name on there or something so that you could just get it that way. Okay. The hard part about Nearpod is that you have to give them a code to use them and Getting them the code can be the challenging part. The parents can get really frustrated. Um, I had a number of people, can you send me the code again? I didn't, you know, Mr. Bassett, you didn't send it to me the first time. Yes, we did. 
because 20 other people in your class got it and already did the work. So um, maybe you could post the code in Google Classroom. So yeah, that would be fine. I wouldn't post that on um, publicly. Classroom is kind of a closed classroom concept. I wouldn't put it on your web page somewhere. Could you change the code, like make it Bassett or something? Every, uh, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. All right, Kahoot. Uh, this is a really cool thing. So I'm going to go over to Kahoot and I want you to do it this way. Let's see if I can get this up. Let's do it classic mode. So go over to Kahoot. Go ahead and get yourself started. Uh, so when you get to Kahoot, you go to kahoot.it and then you type in 601820. And I'm just gonna wait about 20 to 30 seconds. Oh, this is, the YouTube people are probably killing me right now because they're not online. So I might give a little bit more time. I have just a couple of really simple little questions to ask to kind of give you an idea. Remember, once again, you're going to replace the content with what you are teaching. So try to look at it as I'm showing you the way you can assess students as opposed to you have to teach this content to them. And this is another activity where you can actually do it live with everybody like I'm doing it now. And you can also do it asynchronously. So you give them a code that they can do uh, and you um, they can get to it at some point before you close it in the next day or two or whatever you set up. So, all right, I'm gonna give about another 10 seconds. Thanks for hanging in there with me. This hour is going by super quick and I feel like I'm not even where I need to be yet. So here we go. Get to know your teacher. This is, I stole this template off of the thing. So you click on the name of your teacher. That's me for this one. So, and the quicker you answer, the more points you get. So that kind of gamifies this. And you know, you can make this all about assessments. And the kids are just like, like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. All right, and then it shows you the results right away, which is really, really cool that's on there. So uh, then you go up to the next question and you can see who is in the lead so far. So those people that are super competitive, I have a funny feeling Jess is gonna go for the, the trifecta today and win all of these out. Um, this is good. And then your teacher teaches what subject? The hardest part about this is that you have to wait for the actual timer, even if everybody does answer right away. And uh, I'm going to put Shelby on the, the spot really quickly because I know she's listening in. Shelby, you can put in your own pictures, right? Yes, you can put in your own pictures. Also, can you wait like five extra more seconds for us on, on YouTube, please? Yes, I can. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit to the uh, next button and we'll get started. Yeah, the poor YouTube people are at a disadvantage because it is going um, with a tape delay, which I don't remember, it's not too long. So there you go. And I think, oh, I had eight questions, geez. Should have only kept it a few. Matt, we did an entire school-wide Kahoot last year all about Know Your Teachers. It was a lot of fun. We had like 325 teams. That's really cool. It was pretty awesome. And I'm going to mute occasionally my tab because I'm having a hard time hearing other people. I'm, I am going deaf. I do know that. Hey, Matt, the question on Kahoot just went up. Oh, okay. <laughs> It seems to be running out. So those that are on YouTube, by the time that the timer comes down, it seems that uh, 
you are uh, unfortunately already behind. So you're uh, kind of going at your own speed. So um, I am going to stop here, even though I know I have more questions and I'm gonna make a whole bunch of people upset. Um, but we have just a little thing. This kind of motivates some of your students to do really, really well. Very cool. So that's Kahoot's. And that's another one that I think is free for you for educators. And there's a tutorial here for how to play and how to set it up in a background. So you have a lot of stuff to kind of go with. Um, the next one I want to talk to you about is called Flipgrid. Now, what's cool about Flipgrid is we got Stephanie Sandino. She's going to spend a whole hour talking about this. So I just want to kind of whet your appetite a little bit. So if you wouldn't mind going to flipgrid.com slash capered core and you will actually set it up um, for a flipgrid and let me see uh, the question that i'm going to ask you to do is to start by saying hello and share your name and where you work and then um, or whatever part of your work you want to share and then i want you to share a one piece of technology you're excited to try so far uh, with maybe the presentation or even if it was something that wasn't in the presentation. So uh, you can set up Flipgrid so that everything is private and that might be helpful for some of your students or you can choose to moderate them and not make them uh, public until after you viewed them. So those are all things that you can sh uh, share. Um, the capered core uh, tag, I was able to type that in and you can do that as well. The bad part is that you constantly have the issue of um, trying to use the words that might have already been taken. Uh, one of my tricks for that, and you'll see it on all my tiny URLs, is I use my last name a lot, and then I type in whatever word I want behind it. So um, Flipgrid is a, a video tool that allows students to record themselves. And I'm going to probably need to be using this because we are going to be assessing this year more than we did. And Flipgrid allows you the opportunity to uh, videotape and then send it to me directly and they store all of the videos. You could also create videos for assessments like skill demonstrations using Google Forms. Um, and then there's one more I'm gonna show you in just a few minutes as well uh, to get set up. So uh, Google or Flipgrid is a really cool tool and um, it did cost money until a few years ago when Microsoft came in and said, we're gonna give it to teachers for free. So the big thing is sign up for your own teacher account or use your own teacher email uh, to, to get a free account. So, um, and you can have quite a few grids. So you could have one grid per class. Um, you could go grids based on topics. Um, it really, it kind of depends on how you want to organize your own flip grid. So, and then as they come in, let me see if anybody is responding. So you see that there's some, just put one in here and then you can make it active or you could hide it and you could share it. And then you can also do all sorts of different things. And I can respond to her if I needed to or share um, and to go. So uh, this is Flipgrid. Uh, hey Matt, yep. on Flipgrid, it says that you need a code to, that it says join code not found with that link. Hmm. For the code, I don't know all you type in is capered core. Thank you, yeah, Jeff. So using the app itself, the, the, the code itself is capered extension. core that you put in. Also, you also and then you. you're going to come down and you're going to hit record a response. And it will ask you to, uh, I forgot this part, it will ask you to authenticate yourself. Uh, so I already have an account, so I don't have to take too long. And it's pretty easy when you get to this part. You start by hitting the red button and you let it count down. And you say, hi, uh, I'm Matt. And you share whatever it is that you want to share. Uh, you can pause and come back. There are different options that you can put on here. And there are different effects you can put on here. It's kind of like, I guess, Snapchat with something I don't use. When you're ready, you move on. Uh, you can review it. And then you want to take a picture. And then you review it. If you don't like it, you can go back and do it again. And then hopefully it will post. Confirm. Oh, there we go. We got a few extra people now. Cool. All right, so that's Flipgrid. Here's a tutorial video on how to use Flipgrid in case you've never used it. Uh, the next one I want to show you is something called Padlet. Um, this one, the free version allows you to have three Padlet walls. 
uh, but uh, if you want to do more, you can you can pay for the subscription. Um, I don't like to pay for the subscription, so I try to stick within it. Uh, and you can customize the address. So what I would like you to do is go. I know this is a long one. I'm sorry. Uh, Padlet.com backslash Matthew two T's Bassett two S's two T's backslash Capered Core. And then when you get to the wall, I want you to click the little plus arrow. And what I'm looking for you to do is to try to help share. And this is a good crowdsourcing thing that you can do. And I'd love for you to share one social emotional activity that you are already thinking about doing. Maybe it's something you saw at Kate's session or something you've come up on your own. This would be a really great opportunity for us to have a interactive time and we could share with each other of different tech, uh, different SEL activities that we can do. And those are the things that we're gonna be probably pushing pretty hard in the first couple of weeks, if not month of school this year. So uh, padlet.com backslash Matthew Bassett backslash capered core. I'm going to leave this up here for just a little bit to get let you get over there and you can add in links there. You can put in videos. Uh, you can actually set it up to, to be able to respond to other people. Um, you can actually set up. I have the way that I have this set up is, uh, oh, I forgot the, tr the right way to call it. It's the, the type of wall is just it kind of linear, keeps it going, but you can actually have it free form and move over. Kate used a, a different one called Jamboard on her session on Friday. It, it's very similar. Um, and if you're using Jamboard, like it's Google and I'm pretty sure it's free for you. So I, I would use Jamboard if you're really interested, but Padlet is definitely something that's there uh, to get. And you see that you can come in, you hit the button and then you come over here and you start typing things and you see you can uh, add things. You can upload a video or a file uh, link. You can do a Google search um, and more. So, and then you just kind of click off of it and then it's ready to go pretty easy here. So uh, this is uh, Padlet, nice, easy activity. Um, and you, like I said, you get three free ones and then you can delete it. And then you can actually, I think, export these uh, if you wanted to. Uh, there it is, share button. And let me see. Oh, I'm not logged in right now. So it's not letting me, oh, export. So you can save it for later. So this is Padlet, pretty simple little activity that you can use with your students. And here is a how to teach remotely with Padlet tutorial that I found uh, just this week to help you out in case you want to know how to start it up and you have all those things to do. All right, the next one is Seesaw. Seesaw is a digital portfolio app and it has a lot of good plus sides. So where my teachers were talking in the last today with, uh, we're using Nearpod at my school a lot more this year, but Seesaw was a little bit easier to keep your stuff organized and you organize it by person. So I am going to come over here and show you really quickly. And I guess I'm not logged in. So give me a second. Um, Seesaw is fairly easy. You can have, I think it was 10 classes at a time. I might be wrong with that. Um, let's pretend right now I just have a sample student in here, but um, you can actually add all of your students in, in here and there's different ways to do it. If you're a one to one, which you would be remotely, you're going to want to have them sign up and help you and you can actually type names in and it, it, there's a lot to it. Uh, you'll have to see a tutorial to see that. But what I wanted you to see is when you come up here, you're going to post student work. You have a chance to take a picture, you can do a drawing, you could do video, you can link something, you can put a note in, or you can upload something. So let's say I wanted to do a video and let's, let's, uh, let's pretend that I'm doing a tutorial or a uh, demonstration of an overhand throw. So I am gonna go ahead and hit the thing and it's gonna ask for my microphone, start recording in three, two, one. Now let's pretend that I'm a little farther back because I'm sitting down. So I get ready, I'm gonna do my throw. Okay, that would have been a really bad video because I'm too close, but you get the idea. When you're done, you hit the pause button and then you kind of run through it and you do different things. Now you can actually come over and put text on here. You can do a mic voiceover. Explain to me what you were doing while you were doing it. Um, and when you're done, you hit the green arrow. Now I only have one student in this class because it's the sample, but you can actually check off and you can check off more than one student. So if you're an older, sorry, 
wrong way to, to describe that. If you are a middle to high school teacher and you're doing dual offensive strategies or team strategies, you could check off everybody that's in the video uh, there. And then when you're done, you click on it and you just kind of wait for it to load. And then you'll see that there's one item in front of it. Um, when you come over here, you see all of them will be in the class journal, but then you can go look at that one student and find out where they are. You can also set up Seesaw so that the parents will actually see the um, when you've uploaded something to them. So, and that creates a great advocacy tool because when you post a video of something that they're doing in class, then it's a conversation that you can have with the parent or the parent can have with their child of what were you doing today and what did you learn and how do you know that you learned and all those really important things that we need to be doing. So uh, this is Seesaw, a uh, really cool thing and you keep working um, or it, it's a really great portfolio app. So if this is something that you could use, it's really cool. Uh, there are different levels to it. I try to stick with the free version, but this is one of those tools that maybe you're like, I need to go to my admin um, and ask them if we can get this for the PE department right now, and they might find uses for it for uh, the whole school as well. And there is a tutorial for teachers for Seesaw so that you know how to set everything up. Uh, so I probably have overloaded you at this point and killed you off and gotten you so like overblown that you're you're lost. Uh, but I did want to kind of finish up with a couple of things. Um, first of all, is I wanted to show you some creating some visuals and I did show you a GIF not uh, in the beginning. A GIF is a series of pictures put together so it looks like a video. So here's three GIFs that I've created in the past for my students. Um, how you create them, I find it's easier. Your phone can do it. There are apps for there. Um, I use easygift.com and there's a tutorial there. The big thing is you have to make sure that the file size is appropriate. So the first time you make a GIF, pull it into a Google slide right away. Make sure that it's not too big. If it is too big, go ahead and edit it and then you won't make the mistake and have to re-edit 40 different uh, GIFs like I have. Uh, so there's a tutorial. Uh, second one that I thought that was really good for you, and this makes you look really awesome, uh, Comic Life. This is a tutorial video how to use it. Comic Life is an iOS app, and there is a desktop version. Uh, they On the desktop version, it's PC or Mac, and you can actually get an educator discount out of it. You just have to go to their website. I think it's Plask, P-L-A-S-Q.com, and you look for the educator tab somewhere on there. Uh, occasionally they will do a educator discount. We're coming to the beginning of the year. There's a good chance that that might be coming soon, if not already up. I did not look today. Um, and then the other one is during teacher appreciation week, they like to do things and hook up the teachers a little bit. So here are a couple of mine that I've created. Here's a physical education standards poster for the California PE standards that I created a long time ago. And then I figured out in PDF, when you download as a PDF, how you make a poster out of it uh, by doing it. So I think I had physical ed use uh, was one page and then the other page, and then it just kind of layered it down so that it made this big poster, even though I didn't have access to a poster maker. Um, another one is like, can you make directional signs for your students? So this one was one I created on how to use uh, the Gopher FitStep Pro pedometers that are uh, from my school. And then the next one is, you know, creating your success criteria like when students know what it is that you're going to be expecting from them your whole planning goes a whole lot easier your instruction goes a lot easier it goes really 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 well um, this is a really big project that i did many many years ago um, on creating basketball dribbling gifts and i can give you access to these if you want they're actually on my my website bassettpe.weebly.com um, and uh, these are things that you can send out to your students and they can work asynchronously where they're actually developing basketball dribbling skills and there are 20 some odd different skills that I have on mine uh, that are on there and I've created the gifts and then the QR codes go to the gifts and everything. Uh, another way that I've used it is to create actual content to teach people. So this is a step by step tutorial of how to do something called the popcorn dance, which is really cool. The students can scan the QR codes and then they can learn the dance on their own. And then you'll see on the right side, I have one, the dance with counting. So I actually had the audio over uh, counting over the music. And then I had one without the counting that are on there. So uh, what's really awesome is they have these awesome templates that are out there and boy, it makes me look like I know what I'm doing even though I'm really clueless and I have no idea what I'm doing. 
Another one that's on here is Canva. And I would like to take credit for all of these, but we have a Canva expert in Cape Verde. Her name is Stephanie Sandino. And these are some of her pictures that she has sent me. And she actually created a series of tutorial videos that you can go step by step in how to use Canva. Canva is different than Canvas. Canvas is an LMS system to kind of organize getting stuff. Canva is a way to do, create visuals for your class. So we have a lot of them. All right, well, I'm only a few minutes late, so I'd like to give you a little bit of advice for 2021. Um, you know, we're all a little worried about what life's going to be like, and we're going to have to use technology a little bit more than we're used to. Don't be afraid. Ask for help. So I would like you to start slow. Remember that we are all about building relationships and getting us started this year. And remember that you should work on a progression or layer your instruction. Don't start out too quick. I had made that mistake as a teacher, starting out so quick that I forgot and I had behavior issues all year. We're all in this new, um, I've been teaching for 20 years, but I'm going to speak freely that I am a first year teacher again this year. The other thing that I think is really important is to stay connected. If you are not on Twitter, sign up for Twitter tonight. You could probably find enough stuff on Twitter to keep you with lessons and ideas for the whole year pretty easily. There is always somebody online that will help you. A personal story. I couldn't sleep one night and was having one of those nights. I noticed Andy here in Australia was online and I ended up uh, replying to him about something and he realized it was the middle of the night here and he sent me a, a bedtime story that was absolutely hilarious that I still talk about to this day. Uh, once the, you get to know people, um, you become friends and when you get to Capered and you're at the state workshop, those friends, instead of having this awkward getting to know you time. It's like old friends coming together and it's really a great thing. So make sure you stay connected because somebody can always help you. All right, so what I'm kind of looking for is now what? Uh, now we got you going. I really hope that you've gotten some tools to be able to, to go out into this year and to get yourself started. Remember that we have some really awesome upcoming events that are going this uh, week. Uh, Eric's going to talk about Google Classroom in depth tomorrow. Bailey's going to go on Canvas on Wednesday. Mike's going to talk about assessment tools. And then Stephanie's going to talk about Flipgrid on Friday. Now, the part that you've all been waiting for, uh, contact information. This is my work email and also my Twitter handle. Uh, Twitter is an easy way to get a hold of me and I don't lose emails that way. Uh, the tiny URL and the QR code there is a basically a access to this Google slide presentation that I've created. And this Google slide presentation, um, it will make you force a copy so that somebody can't go in and delete everything because they didn't need it. So once you force a copy, you can do whatever you want and you'll see the links are in there. A lot of the things are clickable uh, and it, I put in tutorial videos that are on there. So. I'm going to leave this up here for just a little bit more so that people can go take a screenshot, get out your phone. I know that it's my awesome team. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Shelby, Jess, Francis, Terry, Patty, Andrea for uh, helping me out in the background today while I presented. And I'm grateful for all of them and the work that they've done and helped out uh, for Capered. So, and I think that we're at that time where I have to say, are there any questions? Have I overwhelmed everybody? Okay. Now, the big thing is that I want you to remember with technology is if you're thinking of everything that I presented today as I've got to do everything, don't. What's the one thing? What is the one thing that you're going to go and get started to get going so that you can use that for your students? Do you need to work on something for getting connected with the LMS systems? Do you need to be working on creating your own lessons to be able to get to them? Or do you need to work on your assessments? So try not to overwhelm yourself, uh, but definitely reach out if you need any help. And uh, you know we're here for you and we hope to see you again in the next couple of days for more of the Capered Core uh, tech series. Patty, would you like to say anything before we head out? I'm gonna put you on the spot. And I'm sorry, I just realized that the uh, I got the creepy uh, dark background going. It's just my light's not quite working right. So I apologize if that freaked anybody out. Yes, I would just like to say thank you, Matthew. That was absolutely amazing. Um, a lot, a lot 
a lot uh, for people to take in. And uh, we will also have this on the Capered website. And I'm hoping that Matt will let us um, feature his, his slideshow as well on the Capered website. But thank oh, you all for being here. And don't forget to be here for the rest of the week for all these amazing workshops. If you want to hear more, if you want more of something, let us know. We'll do whatever we can for you. All right, any questions? Are we good? All right, well, have a great night. Thank you for those that are on YouTube for hanging out. And even though I kind of screwed up the times on there, so um, I'm going to go back over and say goodbye to the YouTube people and stop the live stream. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>